The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 1st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't dial in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices are trading to the downside. Dow's off 307 points, 7 tenths percent. One and a quarter percent for the S&P or 75 points. Two percent for the Nasdaq, 401 points. One and seven tenths for the Russell, 41 points. 168 points for the semis, three and a quarter percent. Their trannies are down nearly two percent. 300 point move there. You've got gold that's up 18 bucks, seven tenths percent. Silver's up 13 cents, four tenths percent. Light sweet crude is up 252, 3.7 percent. Natural gas off six penny to 30 treasure up one point and seven ticks. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, Lockheed Martin, $17. Northrop Grumman, $16. Sounds like war drums to Stevie. That's a 3% move for both of those. Acuity Brands, up 16 bucks, 6%. Aero Environment, down 8 bucks, 4%. Willis Towers, 6 uh, bucks. 2%. To the downside, it's KLA Corp up 26 bucks, 3.5%. Lamb Research down 26 bucks, 3.5%. Montreal, uh, Bank of Montreal down 24 bucks, 6%. BlackRock, 25 bucks, nearly 3%. Asthma Holdings, 18 bucks, a 2% move. We got movers and we've got shakers. Well, let's begin our day here. Take a look at New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator. It is now slipped below the zero level. If it closes below zero threshold level today and tomorrow, that will tell us that sellers are the ones in control of the general market that would add to the uh, spot vix index reading the 50 day you're looking at the lower left chart out there the 50 days at 1716 we're printed at 1997 when the spot fix index trades above its 50 day exponential moving average what that does is that provides uh sellers with the uh with the edge out there if we take a look at this chart here the red line on the bottom is the 50-day exponential moving average. The blue line is where the spot fix is trading. Green boxes are when the spot fix is below the 50-day. Yellow are when the spot fix is above the 50-day exponential moving average. So it's a great tool, generally speaking, out there. Now, what we want to be watching today is most certainly going to be the bottom of the profiles out here. Would not be surprised to see these things give loose out here, and we'll tell you in a minute why. If we take a look at the ES Mini, the ES Mini on a daily time frame, you can see the bottom of the profile at 57.46, the top at 58.42. A close below 57.46 would be giving us a profile change in trend signal. If we take now, it just may be a one hit wonder out there. If we take a look at the NQ, what do I mean by one hit wonder? Well, we'll have to take a look at how many consecutive days we're moving to the downside i believe you know just looking at this for the nq and the es mini it's only one day to the move uh, move to the downside in bull markets typically those last for one to two days out there nonetheless you want to watch that 19907 area
area. Price close below that, that would be a profile change in trend for the NQ. In the case of the Dow Diamonds, not as weak as the other two, meaning price has not even gotten down to test profile support, which is 42,148. So that's the number to watch there. You still have a TD9 count top that is present inside the Dow equity future contract. Finally, if we take a look at the Russell 2000, it is trading below profile support as well. That number to be watching today is 22,1275 out there. A close below that would suggest lower price. Now, lower price to where? Well, that's a good question. I don't know if I can answer that just yet, but let's go from this set of charts here. Let's go take a look at what's going on intraday inside of the ES Mini. When price gets back to a level of support, the level of support would have been that bottom of that daily profile. What we look for are intraday signals of bottoms. So here we can see if we just simply start on the left, here's the daily time frame uh, below the oscillator and change line, below profile support below profile support on the five hour time frame chart below its breakout level of support on the four hour time frame chart now this bar doesn't complete till two but that's suggesting lower price no bottoming signals by the way on any of those same thing with the two hour time frame chart let's move over to the 60 minute no bottoming signal there if we look at the 30 minute chart no bottoming signal there that's why i said i would not be surprised to see that support level give way because we did not have any bottoming signals with the exception of a td9 count bottom pattern that formed for the 10 minute time frame chart and price was unable to get above that oscillator and change line that pattern by the way failed at um, at 11 a.m so uh, would not be surprised to see price continue to move lower you are in bar number seven so a 15 minute time frame chart is going to give you a potential bottom signal intraday bottom signal uh, between at 1115 but it completes that pattern at 1130 so you could see a rally up towards the 5746 even 5761 level only on bar number seven inside the 30 minute time frame chart for the es mini so that's got a ways to go before it could potentially form a td9 count so the only one that's actually got a uh, td9 count bottom is the 15 minute chart those of you that trade the uh, us uh, uh, es mini out there you want to watch that 15 minute time frame chart and pay attention to that td9 count bottom pattern let's take a look at the nq out here now it's going to take just a moment or two for this thing to populate oops it will really take a long time if i don't put in the correct symbol syntax out here which we don't want to do so we'll let this populate i believe the daily is going to go ahead and populate first not that that's going to help us out a lot but we can see that price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile that's at that 19 907 area and it's trading below its oscillator and change line now we're waiting for these other time frames here to populate uh, so that we can uh, describe to you what's going on there now the 10 minute chart is completed it negated its td9 count bottom just like the es mini is on the 15 minute time frame chart for the nq we are in also bar number nine the 30 minute chart we are in bar number eight so the 30 minute chart suggests that you could see a bottom form between 11 30 and 12 30 out there but the 15 minute chart is saying i don't know what you're talking about stevie i'm going to go ahead and form some type of bottom signal by 11 30. Uh, none of the other uh, intraday time periods are showing us any kind of bottom signals. They're not really even giving us a great idea of where price might trade to. So let's do this here. Let's just see if we have synergy with regard to all of the 15-minute time frames out here. So let's get those things populated. Now, what I'm uncertain of is whether I've got, I don't know if I've looked at the 15-minute charts here for a while. Yeah, I've got September contract. So we've got to just change this over. Just give me a moment. And we'll do that. We'll get to the December contract. Of course, I may have to wait for this to populate, unfortunately. Let's see if I can do this here. Short change it. Okay, that works. I'll tell you what. We get back from this break. Steve will have all the 15-minute charts set up on my screen. After that, we're going to take a look at the 30-year uh, treasure for Robert, the IWM for Hector. Those are all the questions we've got in the system right now. Of course, I would love to hear from you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So I've got those 15-minute time frame charts here for the four equity future contracts. Three of them have got the uh, TD9 count pattern. Now, the Russell 2000 completed its uh, TD9 count bottom. Let me get my cursor out here. It looks like about uh, 40 minutes ago or so. It uh, confirmed that pattern at 1030. And uh, now what Price did here was it rallied up towards that red oscillating change line. It's trading with inside its profile, but it closed below the low uh, at 1030. That low, by the way, give me a moment here. The low, by the way, that you're watching for is 220150. A close below that suggests lower price. Of course, you want to see what's going on on the other intraday charts for the um, uh, for the uh, Russell 2000 to figure out where price might head to next. The Dow, which does not have a TD9 count bottom, does have a bullish structured profile. And price has found support at the bottom of that profile at 42.286. Price looks like it wants to rally up to that red oscillator and change line at 42.383. We can see that there's been four rallies up towards that level, and that level has acted as resistance. Therefore, a close above that level, 42.383, that's going to suggest a change in trend, so to speak speak at least give us a rally up towards 42497 in the case of the NQ and the uh, uh, ES mini they're going to go ahead and complete their patterns at 1130 what price should do is rally up towards their oscillator and change lines inside the ES mini look at the 5760 ish area inside the NQ the 19990 area on a rally of course if price closes below the bottom of the low whatever the low is, by 11.30 uh, in the uh, morning for the ESCNQ, not the uh, Russell. Russ already gave you that number. That's going to tell us that we should have lower price. But we should get a little bit of a relief right here. We've got so much synergy with regard to these uh, four time frames out there. So I do hope that that helps you out. Of course, we'll come back to the equity future contracts in a bit. But let's go take a look at some requests that have come in. I see a couple inside the Tiger's Den as well. So thank you for that. Let's go to our first one, though. And that is from Robert, who would like to take a long position in TLT for two to three 
week. So we're going to go take a look at the TLT, but I'm first going to uh, shoot. I'm first going to start off by taking a look at the 30-year treasury. The TLT is a 20-plus year time frame uh, for uh, bonds out there. Uh, so you can, you know, but but they're varying different uh, interest rates that are inside there, varying different expiration rates. Uh, so it's a hodgepodge. But nonetheless, let's go take a look at the 30-year to get a gauge on what's going on here. Now, what I want to start with really is the uh, daily time frame first for Robert. So, Robert, here's what we know. We know that the 30-year uh, Treasury had a TD9 count top, went ahead and completed that pattern on September 17th. It also went ahead and formed a Rosemontum indicator top on that day. Price pulled all the way back to its breakout level, 124.02. It did that on the trading session of September 24th, test and rejection. On September 26th, test and rejection. On September 27th, test and rejection and a new profile. That was really your entry point for your trade, which you're looking at as one to two weeks out there. And I'm not too sure that one to two weeks is what this is going to do. What I would have said, and I think we've covered this before out here um, in the last few days, is that as long as 124.02 holds as support, no problems there, you would expect price to rally up towards that oscillator and change line, which is what it has done. So the oscillator and change line is basically printing at the, well, I can tell you exactly what it said. 125, uh, no, I can't tell you. Uh, it's at 125.26 out there, uh, which is basically the high of the day. So now we know that support is held, but we also know a resistance level is held. So you're looking for a potential entry into the TLT. I would say that if you were to get the pullback in the 30 year Treasury to 124.02, that would go ahead and give you your entry point. And if price closed below 124.02, you'd go ahead and exit immediately because price would likely then target lower lows. Now, what we don't know is whether that would set up an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, which it could do, but certainly price would go target the lows from the beginning of September on the 30 year out there. As we take a look at other time frame charts, let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Now, the weekly time frame chart, because you're looking for a one to two week a trade out here, here price is trading with inside its profile. And right now, it's got a sell zone that is trading into. So not really the ideal spot to put on a long trade. That sell zone is between 125.09 and 126.16 out there. So, you know, the risk reward likely isn't there simply because we know where the sellers reside it doesn't mean that price can't take those levels out when we look at the monthly time frame chart robert price is also trading into a sell zone between about 125 uh, uh 120 125 28 and uh, 131 11 out there that would be the sell zone now Let's look at a 30, a 60 minute time frame. Well, let's look at all the charts. Which one has the topping signal? Turns out it's a 60 minute time frame chart. So let's open this up. What should take place here, Robert, is this pattern is going to complete at 12 noon when we get off the air. Price should then begin, maybe it does that before then, starts pulling back to test that oscillator and change line. The current oscillator and change line is at 125.04. Now, could that be an entry point from an intraday uh, standpoint? Absolutely. But is that the intraday for a, a couple of weeks out there? I'd say no because of these resistance zones that price is trading into. Even on the daily time frame, but I give you the zone, that zone is basically between 126, even Stephen, and 126.21. That's your sell zone out there. So the only buy area that I see, and again, I don't know that it's two weeks, I would put the, you know, so it may not be worth the reward risk for you, but would it be at that 124.02 area? And then you got to pay attention to where that oscillator and change line is. But you can use the 124. 126 maybe you know that would be your price target to the upside so that's what i've got robert hope that helps you out and oh i mentioned we go take a look at tlt so we're going to do that uh, so we'll put those charts up on our screen out here i did want to close these out and just to free up some resources now it's not going to be the tlt that shows up first but it will be momentarily i'll get to that tab and I will get there, and we're here. So when we take a look at the TLT, the TLT itself says the buy point would be at 9781-ish. That is its TD9 count breakout level. As far as the uh, sell area, you know, you really got to be paying attention to the 30-year charts out there, in my opinion. But I'd say that the sell point out here would be up at 9941. That's the top of its uh, daily profile for the TLT. Weekly profile, uh, weekly chart looks pretty good. No topping. Well, I take that back. I see a sell the D point top with price pulling back to test that oscillator and change out of the bottom of its profile at 96.88. Monthly chart looks very good because price trade above all profile and oscillator and change line resistance out there. Pay attention to the
the numbers that I was able to provide to you on the 30 year, that would be the uh, better thing to do, just in my opinion out there. So I hope that helped you out, Robert, both with TLT as well as what the 30 year Treasury is doing out there. <clears throat> Let's go to our next request. This comes in from Hector and Patty. And it's with regard to the A to B equals CD patterns. So we're gonna for that we're gonna go ahead and switch uh, screens. We'll go to our black background screen because Stevie's got the tool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to Hector wants to to generate an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside on the monthly time frame chart. And uh, the answer is I don't have really an, a good A to B equals CD pattern here when I take a look at the monthly chart. What I do see is if we take a look at the uh, swing high. The IWM, the month of November of 2021, gets you up to 244.46. If we go from that high down to the low that came in on the trading session of October in 2023, what we can see here is prices made it to the 0.786 retracement level. And that's at 226.74. And as we know, that can be a level where price turns down. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We're going to go to a break. We're going to come back out here. Now, Hector, you did give me A to B equal CD points that started with the October low. But where that's really a clear pattern is on the weekly chart. And yes, I agree with you. There is the A to B equals CD up there. But is it confirmed on the monthly? No, we haven't even taken out its high. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. I'm going to come back to the monthly chart for the IWM momentarily. I want to show you the A to B equals CD pattern that's very clear on the uh, weekly time frame chart. Now, this can be converted to the monthly, but uh, you don't really have to do that. In other words, if you set up three different time frames, like I've got a daily, a weekly, and a monthly, I think you'll get a better perspective as to what is uh, what is going on with this instrument. So as an example, the IWM has a B point that, for, well, first the A point on the uh, weekly time frame was down on October the uh, 23rd. So you were looking at the monthly chart, you were using the October low. So I totally agree with that. Certainly as we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the B point was a rally up into March 25th, the week that began March 25th. Price retraces back to profile support. Beautiful thing, having profile support here on a, a weekly time frame that was down to about the 192.17 level. It does a 40% retracement and then moves higher. Now, the B point, the week that began March 25th, had volume of 116 million shares. When it was passed, shoot, I just froze that. Did not mean to do that. I don't want to lock that. There we go. The B point when it was passed was with 274 million shares the week of July 15th out there. So it confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. That gives us a one-to-one -one price projection of 241.55. Now we could have perhaps taken that same candle set up here on the monthly chart, the real monthly A to B equals CD pattern, and we don't have that yet, Hector and Patty. So you've got the weekly. That's already confirmed. I'd have that on my screen. Now, not necessarily that I would put this on my screen here because it's not confirmed because we haven't taken out the highs, which is how I ended out as we were going to break there when I just had two seconds. And the high that we'd be looking at here is a 2021 high. That would be the B point, and the C point would be the low from October in 2023 out there, as you pointed out. Now, in that case, price is going to need more than 700 million shares should it be able to pass the 244.46 level out there. But if the weekly A to B equals CD pattern uh, comes into fruition out there, you'll get past the 244 area. I believe well, 241 is the one to one A to B equals CD pattern. So those are the A to B equals CD patterns that I see Hector and Patty. Uh, yes, I think that what you picked out for uh, the monthly chart, well, it's better emulated when you take a look at that weekly chart out there. So I um, hope that helps you out. As always, thanks so much for your request. Uh, GTE wrote in again, uh, and he would like to take a look at, or she would like to take a look at XPEV. That's not it. Where did Stevie have that? I thought I had that out there. Well, first we've got to change screen, so that's going to be helpful. So let's get to our white background screen out here. An XPEV uh, formed a, a TD9 count top yesterday, completes that pattern today. So what that signals to you and I, GTE, is that price should move back to the 1112 area. 1112 is its daily oscillator and change line. If we were to pull back, test and reject that level, that would be bullish. We would likely see price move to the upside. There is no real resistance other than the TD9 count top itself, but the weekly time frame is showing us no topping signal and that it wants to continue to move higher, as does the monthly, which yesterday they closed above the top of its profile, which was 1143. So in the short term, we've got some work to the downside. Now, it's possible that price will not get down to that $11.12 area. The reason why it's possible is if we take a look at its stance steps, moves up and moves down. Right now, we're just interested in the moves down ever since the low that formed on August the 12th. And what we've seen here is only one two-bar pullback. All the others have been one bar pullbacks. Now, today is not even a two bar pullback. You'd have to get below yesterday's close out there. So, this is strong momentum. I can tell you it's got that topping pattern. I can share you with what, what odds favor it doing. Um, and that is pulling back to that green oscillator and change line. But does it have to? No. When we take a look at this momentum to the upside out there, it most certainly does not. So I hope that helps you out, GT, with regard to XPEV. Um, Nicholas wrote in. He had a great vacation in uh, Europe and was kind enough to send me a, a very cool picture. And... Um, and uh, he would like is the question basically is, and, and I don't have it on my screen right now. I kind of because I get I mean, literally during this show on that TFNN 
uh, account, I will probably get over 100 emails. That's why I ask you uh, when you send me an email to put radio show question. I really should get some other email box that just you send that to it, and I don't have to accidentally potentially miss something. But And I can keep the emails up. That would be easier. But in this case here, and I know that was a lot of blabbering, but Stevie likes to blabber. Uh, but the question from Nicholas is, could I show a chart or, you know, he was asking about one chart where I show interest rates going down and the market goes down, interest rates going up, the market goes up. The chart that he's looking for would be on my white background screen, but I have a different data feed that I have to use there. So what I've got is this other chart out here. I don't think this is one that you're looking for, but what I can do, Nicholas, is send you the other one out there, which I will do. So, But here, let's move over to the black background screens. The top portion are short-term interest rates out here. Now, the signal has changed from uh, e-signal out there, the signal from e-signal. They changed the instrument uh, uh, back in uh, May, uh, I'm sorry, April of 2024. This is a monthly time frame chart, but this will give you the gist of what it is that we see. So you got short-term interest rates uh, out here. When I say short-term interest rates, I think we're looking at 13 uh, weeks. And here you can see in the top, portion, top portion of the screen, yellow arrow, Nicholas, interest rates moving lower. Go down to the S&P chart down below. What was going on with the S&P 500? Moving higher out there. Um, if we take a look at interest rates moving down again, here you've got interest rates moving down from uh, October or November of 2000, you know, into the 2002 bottom out here. Interest rates are going down. What was the market doing? Going down as well. Here, interest rates were then rising, right? So back in 2003, we saw interest rate structure move higher. What did the S&P 500 do? It also moved higher. No different than when Trump took office. Interestingly enough, uh, we had uh, no no real reason why rates moved higher, but they did. Uh, that's the green arrow to the upside. And now we take a look at the uh, S&P 500. What did it do? Even take a look at the instance here where we started seeing interest rates rise, short-term interest rates rise, back in December of 2021. Now, price did move lower. Uh, for about from the time in the S&P from December of 2021 into September of 2022 out there. So a pretty decent time period. But then things really kicked in. The S&P 500 been moving higher with interest rates moving higher as well. So, Nicholas, I, maybe that gives you the information that you were looking for out there. Um, but that's just simply the way that the market typically responds. Now, is the market moving lower today because of that? Hard to say. Uh, whether that's the case. I mean, you've got a uh, you've got a port strike that took place today. So we know that that is not good for the U.S. economy. And you've got uh, Iran or the U.S. signaling that Iran is getting ready to uh, launch a bunch of uh, missiles, a lob a bunch of missiles into Israel. And this is the this is the, I think, the most aggressive statement that the U.S. has generated out there or put into the public. And so, you know, if we get drawn into some kind of war, even if boots aren't in the ground, you know, we can go back and take my war charts out there. The market's first reaction is to the downside. So there's a couple things out there. But what we most certainly want to be paying attention to at day's end are the bottom of those daily profiles. And again, for the ES Mini, 57.46. For the NQ, 19907. For the Dow, 42148. And for the Russell 2000, 2212. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at FXI, NVIDIA, the SMHs, and the seasonal pattern for Apple. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were taking those 15-minute time frame charts. Glad that they were of assistance to each of you that are intraday traders out there, day traders, because those TD9 counts and the bottom with that uh, bullish structure profile in the 15-minute time frame chart for the Dow it certainly uh, generated that first counter trend signal move. Now, the level to be watching here, you can see the ES Mini is presently trading above its oscillator and change line. Will it be there two and a half minutes from now? 57.64, I don't know. If it is above that, it increases the odds will move to 57. 783. That's its next level of resistance. That is the top of its profile. You know, we take a look at these charts here. It's always first about identifying support and resistance. Are we above or below support and resistance out there? Maybe what I'll do over the course of the next couple of days, maybe change up the charting system. So, you know, I got an email yesterday from a, a new listener out there who who got what I was saying but you know not that familiar with the terms out here and maybe if I just change the terminology a little bit or we take a look at it uh, so uh, anyways that's that's me talking to myself thanks for listening to me talk to myself by the way my grandma used to say that means you got money in the bank if you can talk to yourself I have no idea whether that's true or not uh, but uh, she said it so it must be true in any event 57.83 if as the uh, next price target if price close above the 57.63 on the ES mini but it's probably the NQ that's the whole out right now it has not gotten up to its resistance point which is basically at 19990 so if price close above 1990 19990 the NQ ought to rally to either 2155 or 2280 out there in the case of the Russell 2000 it is uh, trading above uh, the center of its profile so this is trading into a sell zone so to speak between about 2221 22.19, I would say, and 22.28. So a little bit of turbulence there. So that's what's going on in the 15-minute time frame charts out there. So watch those lows. If we close below those lows out there, you know, we are definitely, most definitely, going to head lower out there. All right, let's close these charts out. Uh, we've done that enough for the uh, for the uh, morning. Let's go take an FXI, which is a China ETF out here. The large cap China ETF. Yesterday we looked at FXY. FXY is the uh, as the ETF to trade the uh, yen. But today we're going to probably do if we get the time is go take a look at the uh, euro. So right now let's take a look at that. Wasn't it? It was FXI, which should be right here. 
So we take a look at FXI. What do we know about it? Well, it negated a TD9 count top out here. It negated that uh, back on September 26th. I don't have any other kind of a uh, topping pattern out here to speak of. It has triggered a road momentum indicator top that says if you do get a bearish reversal candle from today forward, that would confirm a road momentum indicator top and suggest a pullback to either 2997 or 3050. But no topping signal there. None on the weekly time frame chart. You can see the nice A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. That would require a, uh, a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. What price is likely to do is go target the top of its monthly profile. And the top of the monthly profile is 33.43 out there. We can see that that uh, profile level held back in January of 2023 will get taken out this time. I don't know the answer to that. If it does get taken out, then that's going to suggest the move up to its breakdown level all the way at the 39.78 area. So I would say more likely than not, price is going to go target that 33.43 area. If that forms a top, expect some type of pullback to test support out there. So that's FXI. I hope that helped you out, GTE. Next request coming in from Mohammed, who wanted to take a look at uh, NVIDIA. So we take a look at NVIDIA. What we have right now, Mohammed, is nothing more than a consolidation with inside its daily profile uh, out here. Uh, and that is uh, between the range of 114.67 and 120.64. With price trading below the oscillator and change line, which is green, it tells us it's lost momentum. So where would be the buy zone on NVIDIA? And I'd say 114.67. We look at the weekly time frame chart, TD9 count top. Move to the uh, downside. Now we've got a sideways consolidation with inside its profile. Mohammed, that range of between 104.33 to the downside, 131.60 to the upside. And finally, the monthly time frame chart has a TD9 count top. It has done its work to the downside. What I mean by that, when you get a top, all price is really entitled to do is go test support. Now, maybe it busts through support, and if it does, then we certainly have a change in trend out there. But here we don't have a change in trend on NVIDIA, not from a monthly standpoint. What you have is a neutral signal. We still respect the topping pattern that's inside there, but once price has tested support and that's held, then you go to a neutral signal. Now, when NVIDIA on a monthly time frame is suggesting it wants to go retarget its all-time high in that 140.76 area out there. But in the meantime, it's got to deal with the daily patterns that are out here again no topping signal per se nor do i have on the weekly i've got a td9 count top you know from back in june on uh, the daily time frame chart you actually have a td9 count top that took place on august the uh, 22nd out there so nvidia nothing more than a uh, trading with inside its profile it should find support at the 114.67 level now today is only bar number one to the downside so let's take a look at NVIDIA after it came off of that uh, bottom here recently. Well, we had one. The, actually, the last move was a four-bar move to the downside. Hmm. Hmm. Something to think about. So what that's telling us, look, your downside moves last year. Your knee-jerk reactions are typically one to four bars. We've proven that time and time and time again. I think this chart is so invaluable to help everybody understand the market. I mean, if you just simply um, – the only tool that you used was that. You'd still be pretty good. You just need to know if you're in a in a bull market or a bear market. That's pretty easy to identify out there. But I love those dance steps. So you're likely to get at least a two to four bar pullback in NVIDIA. But again, watch that 114.67 level. Mohammed, hope that helps you out. John in the Tigers then wants to take a look at the SMHs. So let's go take a look at those, see what they're doing. Have they busted through any levels of support? Turns out they have not. John, what they're doing is they're trading into their buy zone. The buy zone is between 235.83 and 238.35. Do I have any kind of a top on a daily time frame? I do not. So what are the SMHs doing? Well, um, right now we've got a uh, one bar move to the downside. Let's open up its chart out here. And so since it's been rallying, if we just take a look at the rally since November of uh, 2022 out here. Again, monthly time frame chart that we're – oh, we didn't want – do we want the monthly? No, we wanted the, we wanted the daily chart. Why don't I start with the monthly? Yeah, let's go start with the daily time frame chart out here. Sorry about that. It's going to be easy to fix. We just go from monthly to daily. It'll do all that counting for us. So, yeah, you're going to have uh, – so this has had 
the, you know, if we take a look at the rally that began in September, the beginning of September, you had one three-bar pullback. Today is going to be a three-bar pullback out there. So what the SMH is ought to do, John, since we took a look at price pulling back into its buy area, uh, we assume at this stage here that it's in a little bit of a, a bullish uh, mode, at least on the daily time frame out there. And so I'd expect that we get a rally uh, either that's already begun or perhaps beginning tomorrow. Now, on a weekly time frame chart, uh, and I think you wanted to look at daily and weekly, if I'm not mistaken. But if we look at the weekly time frame chart, you have a TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price got all the way back to test support, which in this instance was the bottom of its profile at 208.75. Now, this is finding resistance at that weekly oscillator and change line. Right now, John, that's uh, printing out at 251.57. A close above that would be a bullish signal and take it to 258.30, where it would then enter a weekly sell zone all the way up to 274.81. The week to the downside on the monthly chart for its TD9 count, Rhodes Mintum indicator top, is done. It's tested and rejected that green oscillator and change on it for the last two months out there. 235.43 is a very key level of support. The price closed below that on a monthly time frame that we had lower. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. Let's take a look at Apple, mostly from the seasonal perspective. And Mimi would like to take a look at the GDX. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Well, 
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the seasonal chart here for Apple. Mr. Bills, a wise person out here. He must have known that basically today or tomorrow is the uh, basically the beginning of its favorable seasonal cycle. So if you look at the very bottom portion of the chart, what you'll see, the, the, the bars there show you by month the average performance, in this case here over a 43-year period of time. September. Typically a poor performing month, like most of the indexes uh, out there. But October tends to be the best performing month for Apple. So, uh, Mr. Bill, was there anything else you needed from this chart here? If I put up the election year cycle, uh, you know, which only gives us 11 touch points, the election year cycle says that Apple typically bottoms around October the 10th out there. But I don't know that that's really the cycle pattern that uh, anything is uh, uh, playing into this year. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to me. When I take a look at the uh, seasonal cycle, presidential seasonal cycle, that that really kicked in uh, this year. And we've got, what, about a month to go, a month and a few days out there. So we take a look at Apple right now. I know you didn't ask for this, but we take a look at Apple. It's got a um, no topping pattern. Price is testing support as we speak out here at 224.92. If you close below that, Apple should go target its buy zone, 218.08 to 220.82. On a, a weekly time frame, We've got price that's trading with inside its profile. Support all the way down to 212.49. The sell zone between 224 and 228 out there. So that's what I see going on there. I hope that provided the information that you were looking for. Let's close out the show with Mimi. Mimi wants to take a look at the GDX. So what do we know about it? You know, maybe I'm going to take a look at the GDX, but the answer to the GDX really rests with regard to Goldilocks. We've taken a look at the uh, three-day correlation between the GDX and gold. It is as direct as you can be. We do not have any kind of a topping pattern if we take a look at the GDX. We just have price right now trading with inside its profile. Now, it did close below profile yesterday, the bottom, which is at 39.90. The uh, top of the profile is at 41.66. The weekly chart, and we want to pay attention to this, last week this formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. Uh, did a uh, form day bearish shooting star candle. The price has found support, and this is a real key area out here at 39.63. That uh, is the weekly oscillator and change line. So everything looks still pretty good out there, but the real wild card, Mimi, is gold. We don't have enough time to go take a look at that, but we will tomorrow, most certainly. Folks, thanks for joining me on the first day of October. Have a terrific Tuesday. I will look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday. Take care and be safe out there.